Hi, Mickey. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Good. Uh, I was attacked, though. Oh, yeah? By, by the New Republic, where we both used to work for my high-handed dismissal of Ryan Liz's argument that Barack Obama should run for president this time. Uh, and they have a point. Uh, what is their point? Well, first of all, what's your dismissal? My dismissal is uh, uh, Liza claims that that uh, Obama's last chance might be 2016, the 2016 election. Right. Uh, and my and point as you is point that, out, he'll be about 27 years old at that point. Yeah, he'll be 55, right. and he'll only be 59 four years later. Right. Uh, in 2020, so why can't he run in 2020? Uh, the idea that it, it seems transparently absurd that this, if, if he's a if he's a great political leader, that he would be washed up at the age of 59. Yeah. Uh, Liz's argument is based on this sort of, this Jonathan Rauch theory that you have to, that everybody who's gotten elected has gotten elected in the first 14 years after they achieved major elective office. Uh, I always have problems with historical arguments like that. It's like the Chartists to say, well, the stock market did this before, so it's going to do it again. Yeah, now that seems like a bizarrely arbitrary variable to focus on on theoretical grounds. Yeah, also, um, it's also sort of wrong in that, you know, he counts FDR as only a four-year guy uh, of this 14 years because it took four years from the time he was governor of New York to the time he was president, but forgetting that FDR ran for vice president in 1920, which makes him a 12-year guy. Yeah. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was first elected to Congress in 37, didn't become president until six. You know, I'm persuaded six. already, man. You can stop. I think charters should become a pejorative by which you routinely well, refer to these people. Maybe. Well, there is one sense in which, which he's right. There are two senses in which he's right. First, Kennedy is an obvious parallel. He was a greenhorn senator without many accomplishments who demonstrated in the course of his campaign that he was competent. Yeah, but hadn't he already run for president once? For the nomination? Uh, he ran. He was nominated for vice president, I think. Uh, well, he, he was, be, he he was, was jockeying least, for either president or vice president in 56, right? Right. And he'd at least, he hadn't, I don't think he'd run. Um, good question. I should know that. So, so that, would, that would mean, I mean, so if we saw that parallel with Obama, that would, that would mess things up. Because according to Lee's argument, four years from now is a bad time for him to actually become president, right? Succeed in that. Right. Although he... Um, you know, he could be the vice president to a sitting president, which would be good for him, and then that would be yeah. fine. Well, but I just think the, the future is a funny thing, is my motto. You never know. I right. think he's very gifted in everything. Um, I, I, I thought, you know, the speech at the convention was extremely good. I wasn't sent into quite the frenzy that some people were sent in by it, but it was very good. He's right. very gifted, but I'd hate for him to become the right. David Clyde of presidential politics. Do you recognize that illusion? No, I don't. Uh, all-star high school pitcher who was pushed into the major leagues because he was such a star as a kind of publicity gimmick by, huh. I think, the Texas Rangers, and that was the last anybody ever saw of him. He didn't get the seasoning. There's a rock guy like that, Ben Queller. Well, um, but uh, the, 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 um, the other problem is, I mean, the first problem is he needs some experience. He needs to have accomplished something, okay? He can run for vice president. That's fine. Then he has some experience. Right. The second thing is... Uh, the opening in the Democratic Party is on the left, in the anti-war camp. He is not in that camp. He is in the uh, sort of be responsible uh, straddle camp. Uh, the, you know, we have to but let's withdraw. Face, but, but, but let's so. face it, his, his race will help him with the very people that that position would hurt him. It would help like, him in a general, but it might not help him in a primary if he was up against a real anti-war candidate. Uh, uh, that's Maybe not, but I think it would help. I think it would help. Yeah, it would certainly help. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, so, uh, anyway, uh, the, the, the other point uh, Liza makes, which is true, is that, you know, everything moves faster these days, so maybe, maybe the current four-year cycle isn't suited to our current culture. In other words, people become media phenomena, and they, uh, you know, they, they wear out their welcome before they have a chance to run for president several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, the counterexample of that would be Wendell Wilkie, who was about as fast of meteor streaming across the, the screen Mickey, as... Mickey, you are a fount of historical as, information today. Uh, it's just amazing. Thank you. I did some boning up, but I obviously didn't look up whether Kennedy had run for vice president. Well, um, nobody's perfect. So, uh, but but I, I, on, this, on this presidential sweepstakes business, I have right. something to say. Okay. Which I think that Wes Clark has significantly reduced whatever small chance he ever had of being the nominee... He wrote an article in the... An op-ed piece in the yeah. New York Times 
which struck me as as really dumb. And then I I I, I checked the blogosphere and found that uh, a lot of lefty bloggers agreed, and not not just far left bloggers who were disappointed that he wasn't coming out for withdrawal from Iraq, right? But that who recognized that his plan was just plainly unrealistic. I mean, it was like, okay, first let's keep doing everything we're doing with the military in Iraq, except do it better. And then let's do five other things we're not doing, like seal the border. And then let's get the Iraqis to do things like uh, stream oil revenues to the federal government and disband the militias, things they definitely don't want to do. Right. And, and we've already us, tried to get them to and, do. And let us patrol the Iranian border, which they also probably don't want yeah, us to do. Yeah, it was do. just so bizarrely unrealistic that, well, I, I mean, I, I honestly think, uh, I initially had hopes for, for Clark in the last election. I really think the guy kind of has a screw loose. Well, this was, but this was just a, a, a piece of, about how to give Wes Clark a defensible position. It wasn't a piece about actually how no, to No, but there's some sort of, I mean, you've got to maintain some kind of tethering to reality here. The, it was just, it was ridiculous. It was very similar to uh, those New York Times editorials that say, you know, President Bush must enlist the allies in... in deposing Saddam militarily. Well, but the Allies weren't going to go along. Well, that and that's another thing a lot of Democrats it, keep it, saying, too. But, you know, he's a military guy. His credentials should be his, his rugged realism or something, you know? It was pie in the sky. And, it, and, you know, like Kevin Drum, kind of mainstream, reasonable lefty right, bloggers right, right. took him to task, rightly. The, the right wing's favorite lefty blogger, I, according to one survey I saw. Because they agree with him or because they think he does a bad job? Because they think he's reasonable, and they're right. He is reasonable. He is reasonable. Yes, that's not a bad thing. No, and I don't. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, uh, uh, well, I agree with you. It was a positioning piece. It was. It was, and it, and it didn't make any sense. No, terrible. And, he, and he's right to and be. And it really him. was kind of almost universally condemned in the blogosphere by the people who you would think might like him. Right. Um. Now, that, was that a bell? That was a bell. That was our topic. Why don't you tell our viewers what that what that new feature signifies, this is, Mickey? This is our topic ending bell. Uh, now, you're going gonna to ring that every time a topic ends or just when I'm blathering on and you want the topic to end? Well, you can get your own bell, Bob. It, they sell them as staples for $4.95, uh, and then you could ring the bell on me. All our viewers could get them. They could, but it would be, it would be ineffectual. Uh, the, the, the point is when we've gone on, it's a way for us to get out of a topic rather than just sort of doddering on into uh, senescence. Like we, what we're doing right now? Yes, we okay. get to... So it's a crisp. clean break, and we're moving on to the next thing, and here's what I want to talk about. Okay. You know, you have been known to uh, decry the left-wing media conspiracy, which you see signs of everywhere you look, notably the New York Times and sometimes CNN. Yes. Um, and an example of that for you is the way you uh, supposedly the Jack Murtha withdrawal speech was overplayed. Well, the way they built up Murtha into, like, oh, suddenly he's an... You know, an Iraq hawk turns critic when okay. you've been a critic for years. Well, in any event, the Mirtha withdrawal meme has, has spawned a counter meme that I think has been overplayed by the media to the detriment of Democrats. But will you, can you be counted on to, to take note of this particular uh, well, warping well, of the news? No, so I have to. Why don't you test me? Okay. It's the, you know, Democrats are in disarray over Iraq meme. You're seeing the story everywhere, you know. They can't, and it really was. It, it, it is a follow-on to the Mirtha story because that led to a lot of debate within the Democratic Party. Well, yeah, Pelosi endorsed Mirtha, but then the, the caucus won't endorse the position, and she doesn't even want the caucus to endorse the position, and Rahm Emanuel is pissing on the position. Are, so, yes, I would say those are signs of You are the meme come disarray. to life, Mickey. You are the personification of the Democrats Thank in you. disarray meme. You're, you're, you're performing. Thank you. What's in, wrong with it? What's wrong with it is why should the Democrats be, you know, I mean, first of all, what's new? Democrats are always in disarray. But secondly, why should they be expected to have some kind of coherent, like, platform-like position on this? A, because they're, they're, moral not, they're not the governing party. A, B, they didn't get us into this mess. C, we have an election next year, but it's not a federal election. So, you know, it's fine for different Democrats to go to their different regions and say things that they're different constituents you're not like. We don't need disarray. one position. You're not denying they're in disarray. You're just saying it's okay I'm just that saying it's not a very significant story, yet it's being treated as such. You, you're, you weren't denying that Mirtha said we should withdraw. You were just saying it was being overplayed. I'm saying I the story being was, overplayed. I was being hyped. I say they were, hyping, they were hyping him and building him into a hero because, as the note notes, 
the press wants us to withdraw. Well, explain to me why are they hyping this story into a major crisis when it's a sort of routine diversity of opinion that you see in a political party, and there's no reason to really expect anything well, else, and it's well, much less of a crisis than it would be if they were the actual governing party or if there answers. were a presidential they're not, they're election not, around the corner. They're not building into a major crisis. That a lot of them are disappointed that the Democrats aren't gravitating toward the Mirtha position, uh, so they write about that. And third, there is a natural cycle in the news where if you do story A, then you do story anti-A. And in this case, the story A was, uh, you know, the, the Merthites boldly call for withdrawal. And anti-A uh, should story, be hyped exactly to the extent that A was? It isn't being hyped exactly to the extent that A was. There are a couple of stories. There's a Robin Wright story in the Washington Post, and there's... It, it, it's not nearly the the, uh, the the hype wave that the Mirtha thing was. You don't see uh, you don't see uh, you know Richard Holbrook on every talk show uh, saying we shouldn't set a timetable for withdrawal. That's what they would do if, Mickey, if they were hyping. Review, the I, I can now reveal to our viewers that moments before we clicked the button and went live while we were talking on the phone. I said, now, it's not my imagination, right? This Democrats and disarray meme is all over the place, right? And you said, like, oh, yeah, totally, man. It is a meme. It's all over the place, but it's not as big as Mirtha. That's my position. I'm sticking to it. Oh, okay. You win. Uh, I mean, but you admit that they're in disarray, so I don't see what the problem is. Uh, you, I, you, I, you, I almost, uh, I admit that they're in diversity. They're in you, diversity, Mickey. You're, you're, you're just, you're just, uh, you're criticizing Disarray the media for pointing this out. Disarray is a word for when order is to be expected or, or especially desired. People are moral actors. If, if the Democrats were president today, what would they do? That's a very reasonable question to ask. Right now we're in Iraq. Would well, they withdraw? But, but would actually, they stay? Actually, let's... Seems to me to be a responsible opposition, you should answer that question. Actually, a successful Democratic candidate for the presidency does not have to say, I would do something right now that's radically I different. I didn't say what successful. Can I, I said you'd be me. moral. Oh, to, can I should, finish the sentence? He should have a position. Mickey, does not, uh, that, that kind of candidate does not have to say, I would do something radically different from, from Bush right now. Uh, you know, they can say, look, I would do something more or less like what Bush is doing right now. But I wouldn't have gotten us into this mess. Well, right, and some are saying that, and others are saying, no, they would do something radically different, and that's why they're and in this array. Let flowers bloom. It doesn't matter right now. <laughs> but I will say, speaking of this, that uh, among the, the, the hundred or thousand flowers uh, was Howard Dean, you know, doing the predictably stupid thing. I mean, that guy truly has a screw loose. Okay, we agree on that. Yeah, saying basically, look, Victory in Iraq is impossible. I mean, you know, if you are in politics, there should be whole regions of your brain devoted to keeping you from uttering two or three sentences, things like, there is no God, we can't win a war we're in, you know. There's just like a few th things you definitely should not say. I mean, what is the story with Dean? Well, he's trying to, he's trying to I think, keep the, the, the base happy sort of off the radar screen. You don't see I, him on I just think he lacks impulse control. I really do. I think that's always been the problem with him. He just gets excited. He's like me, except he made the mistake of going into politics. Um, and I will I, not forgive him. However, another I, I'm not going to argue with that. You another know. person I will not forgive is, is a blog that's a member of the, the uh, upstart right-wing blog network Pajamas Media responded to this faux pas of Howard Dean's by depicting him as Hitler, complete with swastika and mustache, now, I thought that was going a little bit overboard. Who, is, who fact, did that? I, 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 I'm friends with a lot of the pajamas people. I well, mean, I'm not hang, shocked. I did describe it as they, upstart and right wing, did I they not? They hang around. Right, exactly right. But, but, but yet they like Kevin Drum better than me. Who knows? Uh, but uh, they hang around Los Angeles, uh, and I wish them well. I almost joined them. So, uh, who, 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 Instead of me, who would I be talking to now? Well, you'd be talking to a member of Pajamas Media. But who, who, uh, who's, who, whose blog said this? What's it called? It's called. It's 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 a it's a it's a takeoff on. Uh, it's a variation of an Ayn Rand named. It's Atlas Shrugs or something. Oh, okay. You I ever don't heard think of that's, it? Yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't think that's one of the huge ones. But so yes, yeah, so so um. No, somebody it's despicable. It's despicable. It really is. Okay, I agree with you. Well, is pajamas media going to disavow it or, or, or do anything? It's a violation of the Hitler rule, which is you should never bring up Hitler. That's right. But uh, I don't know. Um, but I, do we want to call on them to condemn this person? I mean, it, it seems to me that then you're in the slippery slope. I madness. call on them to condemn this person. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you could also go to Pajamas Media and see their sort of pathetic, fake uh, imitation uh, 
of, of, of our rich media experience. They have a debate between Mark Cooper and Michael Ledeen, Cooper on the left, Ledeen, of course, on the, on the right, about Iraq, where instead of showing them interacting on video, they just have uh, successive blog entries uh, with their photographs, which is not nearly as, as compelling. That is like so yesterday, man. It's, it, it, yes, I agree. It's, 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 it's totally lame, but the debate is actually pretty good. I actually urge urge people to go there because Cooper Cooper defends his position well, and Ladine isn't as as wacky as his reputation. Uh, well, that, that's setting the bar pretty high, Mickey. He's a pretty it's a good debate. I recommend it, even though it's not a rich media experience. Yeah. Well, oh, there's the bell. Time there's to move the bell. on. Time for a new topic. Uh, I want to say something about this Palestinian Palestinian professor in Florida who was um, partially acquitted and in any event entirely beat the rap for now. Uh, he was acquitted on some counts, and there was a hung jury on others. And right. the, these counts related to his, in various ways, aiding and abetting tor terrorists. This is Samuel Arya. Yes. Yes. Now, let me stipulate at the beginning that I do not know the facts of the case. Right. Nonetheless, I'm going to make the claim that this headline in the New York Times is in one sense misleading. It says, not guilty verdicts in Florida terror trial are set back for U.S., now, that's technically true, since, after all, the prosecution represents the, United, the U.S. as a state. Right. But I would say that the outcome of this terror trial is actually good news for the U.S. in terms of its national security, uh, and that the, the prosecution should not retry him on the, on the hung jury charges. Now, is my logic so obvious that you can guess what I'm going to say? Yes, your logic is so obvious. We've, we've, we're, we've helped uh, not prove, but... Uh, it's evidence to the Muslim world that Muslims can get a fair trial in the United States, and there's something to our system that maybe they should admire and not destroy. Yeah, and, I mean, we, we purport to want to get this freedom paradigm out there, and this is a perfect example of it. The, the government of the United States wanted to lock this guy up. Twelve randomly selected, more or less randomly selected Americans said, sorry, no, you don't have that much power, even though you're the government, we're not convinced. Right. That's See, a great thing. Again, uh, I don't know the facts of the case. I'm not saying justice was served. I do think this does us more good than a million years of Karen Hughes rubbing elbows with Muslim women, which I, also is not setting the bar very high. And, and, not, and not just with Muslims around the world, but, I mean, I think it, feel, it makes American Muslims feel that the system works for them and, and makes them less alienated than they might otherwise feel in the wake of 9-11. I agree. The other bogus meme was uh, that somehow this was a, a blow to the Patriot Act. Uh, well, the Patriot Act you know, led a lot of evidence into this trial. The Patriot Act doesn't say that the evidence has to be persuasive. Uh, it seems to me it's a victory for the Patriot, Patriot Act. It showed that they could get in the evidence and juries could accurately assess them assess the evidence and they weren't going to be blown away by the fact that this was secret clandestine Patriot Act evidence. So it seems to me the Patriot Act worked fine. It's the, the prosecution didn't prove his case. Do you think they'll retry him? Very good question. This will be a good test of, of uh, at, what, at what level is that kind of decision made? In this it's case it could go up pretty high. I, right? assume the, I assume Gonzalez, yes. Well this will be if a good test higher. of his wisdom. Um, well, he'll do whatever will help his career. So Unlike other people. Could go either way. True. Um, cool. Uh, can I ring it? Yeah. We're, we agree. I think we agree. I think this is a brilliant device. Yeah, I, I really, I, my, my hat's off to you, man. Uh, I think that, 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 you know, that brainstorming session we had the other day really paid off. Oh, and yeah, and this is a, this is the first in the rollout of of of, very, of cutting edge devices that of a, a, an avalanche of blogging head gimmicks. Yeah. In the weeks ahead. Yeah. Cool. So is that is that the end? Was that, that was the, the final bell. That was the twelfth round. I think that was the final bell. Okay. Um. Uh, see you soon. See you next time. Okay.